Welcome to the Kajabi Edge podcast, where we talk to real entrepreneurs to give you the online business edge you need to succeed on Kajabi. I'm your host, Jared Lohman, Vice President of Customer Experience. And today we're joined by Anna Dearman Kornick, time management coast coach and host <laughs> of It's About Time podcast. Unedited. How's it going? Anna? I love it. Time management coast, coach and host together. I'm doing yes. well. Thanks so much, Jared. Well, thank you for being here for all of my uh, audible bloopers <laughs> that we just inject right into the show. Yeah, it's real. Bring it on. Yes. Well, let's just get started uh, as uh, since I didn't give you the best possible intro that I could have. <laughs> give us your elevator pitch. Tell us about time management. Sure. So I, my name is Anna Dearman Cornick. I'm a time management coach and host of It's About Time, a podcast sharing stories and strategies to inspire better work, life, and balance. Um, I love what I do because every day I get to help busy professionals and business owners stop feeling overwhelmed so they can start spending time on what matters most. I cannot wait, and I'm going to be very conscientious of time throughout this podcast now. <laughs> I, I'm feeling the, the pressure here. <laughs> oh, come on. It's fine. You'll be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's just get started with your genesis, if you will, how you made it into this world. Did you have a day job before? <laughs> Start wherever you feel like in the timeline makes the most sense. Sure. So I'm going to bring you all the way back to the beginning because nice. it, it's always helpful to hear how someone got their start. So I actually actually got my start in the professional world in the marble halls of Congress, uh, managing Ooh. one of the most hectic schedules in the world, that of a United States congressman as a congressional scheduler. So I spent what felt like 10 to, day, 10 to 12 hours a day parked in front of an Outlook calendar, managing every single minute of my boss's day from the time he woke up in the morning until he wrapped up his, his day at the very end of the day. Um, and it was it was a lot. It was constantly fast paced, um, trying to manage someone's time who had to somewhere somehow be everywhere at once. Right. Um, but I'm a Louisiana girl. So I grew up in Louisiana, which if there's one thing I need you to know about Louisiana, it's that our food is good. We have amazing cuisine down here in Louisiana. And even though I loved the hustle and bustle of working on Capitol Hill, I really started to miss home. I missed having easy access to things like crawfish etouffee and boiled crawfish and shrimp creole and really good gumbo and all that good stuff. My grandmother's homemade mayha jelly. So I hopped on a plane and moved back to Louisiana where I kicked off a 10 year career in the 24 seven world of crisis communications and government affairs. So yes, I had a day job, except it was more <laughs> like a day job, a night job, a weekend job and a holiday job. It was nonstop. We're talking, working through oil spills, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods and droughts, nonprofit embezzlement schemes. Did I say oil spills yet? <laughs> um, universities on the brink of financial collapse, plant explosions, like you name it. And I've probably escorted someone down a back, you know, freight elevator into an alley in order to avoid TV cameras waiting outside. It sounds like you're not the type of person who is up for a challenge. <laughs> Creating order out of chaos, I mean, that was my thing, and I was good at it. Maybe a little bit too good. So this is where this is where the burnout part of my story comes in. Um, that so many of us who worked day jobs completely understand. Um, the 24-7 nature of this role really began to take a toll on me. My boundaries were basically non-existent. My relationships were not in a great place. Health we can say that was crumbling. I was missing really, really important family events and friends, baby showers. And I'll be honest, after one too many days crying in the stairwell on the way up to my windowless office, I knew that something had to change. I knew that there was a better way, but I didn't know what it looked like. Gradually, I became introduced to this world of online business. And I saw that there were people who were taking control of their time, taking control of their destiny and building businesses, doing what they loved from the comfort of their home while raising their family. Now, I didn't have a family at the time. It was just me. But over the last few years of trial and error, 
reading tons of books, making lots of mistakes, and finding that I wasn't the only person that struggled with burnout and a lack of productivity and overwhelm. And so now I've made it my mission to help other people either dig themselves out of that dark hole of burnout that I was in or help them avoid it altogether. So that's how I went from being a scheduler on Capitol Hill to now helping busy business owners and professionals manage their time. Wow. You know, I have been accused of being a workaholic a time or two in my life. However, I don't think that you could have a better sales pitch for being someone who is a time management helper. Um, and I think probably more importantly is just the the level of, uh, I almost call it inception here, because entrepreneurship, if you don't have time management, there's no way you're starting work. out. Like no. it just can't work. Mm -mm. So Let's just continue this journey. <laughs> I, I want to know what's next. Um, how did you like, how did you transition or I, you heard about this, like this field, but how did you decide it was time to go out on your own? I guess. You know, it's really funny. Um, I was having an exceptionally bad day in the office and I went to the Louisiana Secretary of State's website and I applied for an LLC. I had no idea what I was going to do with it at the time. I just knew that I'm going to start a business. I'm going to make this happen. And so I named it, so it was, it's generic, ADK Strategies LLC. I can, I can do strategies, whatever that is. Um, and so taking that leap and making the decision and filing for an LLC before I had anything up and running, that just gave me the boost to keep going and figure this out. Um, but you know, one of the most important things that could have happened to me along the way was checking my spam folder. Okay. Okay. One day in this trial and error period, I was randomly checking my spam folder. Um, and in my folder was an invitation to a training on the Myers Briggs personality assessment. And I've always been a big personality junkie. I really believe that time management is not a one size fits all thing and that you have to use strategies that work for you in the way that you tick. We can't copy and paste what works for someone else and expect it to automatically work for us. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to go to this certification weekend and become a Myers-Briggs certified personality analyst, whatever it is. And then I get there and I meet coaches. I'd never met a coach before. Um, I certainly wasn't a coach yet, but that's where I got introduced to the world of coaching. And at first I thought, no, this is weird. That's not a real thing. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Um, so I, I went through the program. I became certified. I met so many amazing coaches, kept in touch with them, and just, just gradually began exploring what this world of coaching and online business could look like. I found more and more amazing examples. Um, and so taking that leap and just seeing what might happen next, you know, you can't, like you said, you can't start a business successfully unless you you have good time management. You can't wing it. You have to have a plan and you have to you know, be willing to also take risks. And so I would say that checking my spam folder and just being open to what was next um, was, was huge for just exploring the whole, the whole process. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to hone in on one 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 key area there. You mentioned uh, essentially what I would amount to uh, for our listeners is just taking that first step, mm -hmm. taking some form of action. For yeah. some people, for you, it was creating an LLC. For some people, it's as simple as putting pen to paper and mm -hmm. creating an outline. Or you know, for others, it's maybe just deciding things that they don't want to do. Right. If they're anything like me, you run into decision fatigue, and you're like, "Well, should my course be on dog walking, pizza making, <laughs> or coffee brewing?" I'm just not sure. Yes. And what's so great is that you don't have to get it right the first time. When I first branded myself. I called myself a leadership coach, a leadership coach helping people with, I think it was communications, time management, and something else. I don't even remember. Um, but I worked with someone to help them with speaker coaching, and I helped somebody else with time management, and I helped somebody else with something else. And kind of experimenting in the beginning and trying different things 
almost to see what I enjoyed and to see what really stuck. Um, that's what then brought me to narrow my focus just to time management because anytime someone needed a time management speaker, they would reach out to me. Anytime someone needed help with time management, they would reach out to me. And so it's just time after time, it continued to build. And then at, you know, at the time, so this was several years ago, there weren't, there are business coaches all over the place. There are life coaches all over the place. There aren't too many of us time management coaches walking around. <laughs> sure. And so I wonder, is this even a thing? Can I even do this? But I, I made the decision on, it was May 22nd, 2019. And I said, I am going to be a time management coach. I am going to make this a thing. Um, and here we are. It's a thing. <laughs> I want to learn more about that next, but again, like really quickly, I, we're getting, hitting so many of these things. I thought I was the only one in the world who like my journey was very like one thing today, Nick, but after 80 ish episodes of this podcast, I'm learning probably more often than not. What you start with is not yeah. what you ultimately end up doing, which right. is amazing. I would, I really want to now drill into like, it sounds like you almost created a category <laughs> Um, how, like, at what stage was your business at? Like, did you have viable income that had replaced your day job before you made the switch to time management? How did that, how did your situation look? Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a great question. So let's see. I left full-time work, um, in 2016, two weeks before I got married. Um, Hey husband, guess what? I'm <laughs> quitting my job. Um, but he completely understood and was so supportive. Uh, but I, reached out to so many um, contacts and connections, just trying to figure out what was next. Because remember, this was a very trial and error phase. Like, am I going to go to law school? That was even on the table. Do I want to try and work in another PR firm? Do I want to, I worked in politics for a period of time. Do I want to go back to that? And so this time of exploration just involved me reaching out to a number of different people asking, hey, do you need help? And so I worked, um, on a few political campaigns. I worked freelance for an advertising firm doing their public relations and thought leader marketing for their CEO. And I was taking pieces of my past life in communications and just experimenting. Um, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having all of these like different side gigs or, um, other like keeping your day job even while you build the empire. You know, sometimes you have to do one type of work in order to fund the business that you're building. And so that's essentially what I was doing. I was working um, part time. So I, I'll actually say this. I had my first daughter in January of 2019. Um, I took time off from working to, of course, be with her. I then started working part-time for an advertising firm, um, helping out with their PR while I was building the coaching business. And so the, the, the part-time role helped me purchase education, helped me work with a coach myself and helped me. Um, it gave me that cushion to get my time management coaching business off the ground because let's be honest, those early months of business, anybody who pretends to be an overnight success is lying. That is not real. <laughs> <Yep>. Like you <laughs> have to, <clears throat> you have to put in the work and put in the time and do the reps and you learn one thing and you learn then that there are three more things you need to learn. So it just, it multiplies and it grows. Um, but it, I did not go, you could say, full time in my time management business until that ad firm had to make some cuts. Mm -hmm. And so they let several of their contractors go. And it was like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to make this happen. Um, and that was a, a really important kind of push off the diving board for me to just go all in. I think about every overnight success story that you hear comes with about a decade of preparation. Yes. yes. <laughs> Any less than that, they're probably also lying to right. you. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, uh, let's, uh, I guess, take us on the journey of uh, undoubtedly, like even if you did have some of your business built up, like that's a 
challenging situation there's still that little bit of that comfort zone associated mm -hmm. with maybe the steadiness of mm -hmm. the contract work that you were doing um what happened next in your journey uh were you dead set this is like i'm going all in at that point in time right so i was i was dead set and then you know what happened i started getting job offers for roles that i would have killed to have gotten a year prior it, it blew my mind and it caused me to really stop with like this almost sick to my stomach feeling and think, are you going to do this? Because here you have this opportunity to be the vice president of XYZ for this thing that you wanted a year ago. But now having gotten a taste of building that business and I was beginning to work with clients one on one, like so many coaches do in the beginning. And I knew that, no, this is it. I'm going all in. I'm going to make this work. Where there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, sometimes it takes being presented with a very tempting offer to reinforce what you really want to do. And it can be scary to turn around, to, to turn away that offer of consistency. But if you can just start you know, investing in your business yourself that you have to start investing little by little in order to see those compound returns later. Yeah. Well, uh, take us uh, through the journey of transitioning from one-on-one -on -one coaching into, and I guess also like, I don't, we haven't yet talked about your digital product or yes. where you're at maybe today. Um, can you take us on that journey of how you transitioned into digital products? Yes, absolutely. So I knew from the get go that at some point in the future, I wanted to serve one to many, you know, I wanted to serve more people than just in a one on one setting. But I also knew that it was incredibly important to have that experience working with clients one on one, in order to get that front row seat, that immediate feedback on what are the actual time management struggles that people have and do the strategies that I am providing them, do they work? Um, and so having that was incredibly important. So my first step into a digital product was offering a group coaching program. So I, my very first group pro coaching program I offered in the summer of 2020. So the world was a crazy place <laughs> and there were so many people who were just looking for a way to stay grounded, but also connected while we were all staying at home. And so I used Kajabi to create a, an eight week group coaching course. And every week I would release a new series of videos on a Monday. And then on Wednesdays, we would have this amazing, rich, um, group coaching conversation centered on what they had learned from the videos and worksheets that had been released on Monday. And that gave me such an amazing opportunity to test drive, um, teaching content, like okay, is this, is, is sharing it in this way effective? And so gradually what I learned, um, through that immediate feedback from my group, combining the, the videos and the online course aspect with the group coaching program is that, okay, there's something to this, like this, this framework I've created. So my time management framework is called the heart method. It stands for habits, energy, attention, recharge, and time. So every week we focused on a different aspect of that framework. And it gave me something that I've now been able to um, duplicate and repackage into a membership. So my podcast is called the It's About Time. It's About Time. And so I also have the It's About Time Academy. And the It's About Time Academy has taken the same concepts that I created for that initial group coaching program. And now I teach them in my membership, hosted in Kajabi, using Kajabi's private podcast. So I release a private podcast, a members only private podcast series every month to my academy members on a different piece of the heart method framework. And it's just been amazing to have a way to connect and to teach a group of people who are busy. They need to be able to listen and learn on the go in the carpool line while they're doing laundry, while they're going on a walk in between meetings. And so combining um, just the, the online learning aspect of Kajabi with that private podcast that can go with them anywhere has been just so much fun. 
I love the irony of your target market has to really work hard to find time to listen to their time management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more. I feel like there's a few gaps that I'm still trying to fill in. Um, <laughs> uh, your first, like, your first group that yeah. you piece together were these your offline customers the people that you'd been coaching one-on-one or how did you find that initial initial group to bring into your digital experience that is a great question so um i let's see in may of 2020 i did a group i did a coaching launch um i conducted a day full of workshops opened up my calendar for discovery calls and filled my roster of one-on-one clients now as much as we would like to um book every single person person that we have a discovery call with. That's not the reality. Most people typically what have a 20% discovery call conversion rate, um, somewhere around in there. And so there were people who I spoke with who really wanted to work together one-on-one, but either it wasn't in the budget for them or it wasn't right during that time. And so I knew that there, that there was a need for a lower cost option for people to get that community and that time management help that that would give them that feeling of work life balance. And so whenever it was time for me to whenever I was ready to open up that group coaching program, um not only did I do the typical launch activities like a a, a webinar, a workshop, um an email sequence, but I also reached out to those people directly. You know, there's so much power in reaching out to someone and sending them a personal note and saying, Hey, I really loved our conversation. I wanted to let you know that I've created this program and I think you would really love it. And so that's the main way that I filled that initial program was through people that I had spoken with previously who were interested, but it wasn't quite the right time or it wasn't quite the right offer. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And that's something said, uh, off the like going way back in time, I, I started writing a little bit of a book on how I acquired some of my first customers. And the reality of it is, is there is always someone like really close to you that can be that first customer. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're even in the same household as mm-hmm. you. That's, you know, <laughs> but you can find them really close. And I yeah. love that, that. Like we hear that trend so often of people, they're finding their first customers um, through channels that they already know. It's not mm-hmm. necessarily like pulling up a big Facebook ads campaign or, right. you know, putting up a billboard on the freeway. <laughs> right. And I mean, you know, people need to, you know, we talk about the no like trust factor all the time. People want to work with people and buy from people that they know that they like and that they trust. And if you're just some rando with a billboard, nobody is going to know, like, and trust you just based on the one Facebook ad that they see, you know, you have to build a relationship, whether that relationship is through releasing a podcast and talking with people every single week about a topic or by communicating with them, engaging with them on social media, or just being friends with people, you know, I mean, relationships are everything. Um, so, uh, one of the things I'm always interested in is hearing how you actually discovered Kajabi. It's a funny name. It's not <laughs> something you randomly encounter on a Google search, I don't think. So, how is that the the product that you ultimately found um, to start hosting this content? Okay, so you remember that back before I even had a business idea, I created that LLC while I was miserable in my windowless office. Well, during that time, I was also learning just a lot of random things about online business, like understanding that it existed and how people market an online business. And so I actually started investing in courses pretty early on. Um, And one of the courses that I that I purchased was housed in Kajabi, and I had never experienced it you know, I'd never experienced Kajabi before, but that was my first introduction was taking an online course about online business and how to structure your business and set up your financial, set up the financial side and organize your time. That was even a really great part of it. Um, and so, you know, it really took being in learning mode and paying attention to what other people were using. And, you know, I, I used I've purchased several, lots of courses. Let's be honest. I'm a course junkie. I love them Uh, on lots of different platforms. But once I took a course that was in Kajabi, to me, that one just seemed above and beyond all the others. It was by far the best experience. 
uh, that's my favorite. I love it when the member experience is what ultimately attracts you um, when you when you become a course creator. Not that everyone, of course, who takes a course. That sounds like quite that's a that's a mouthful. <laughs> everyone who takes a course created everyone who takes a course doesn't create a course, but I love that that when that is the journey, um, and we hear that so often uh, about that member experiencing really member experience really standing out. Um, so uh, take us through uh, from where we are where we were there to where we are today. Uh, what does your business look like right now? Sure. Oh gosh, it really blows my mind sometimes to think about everything that's happened in the last few years. So I'm still a time management coach. Um, I still the host of it's about time that podcast launched in December of 2019. Yes. December of 2019. So I'm in around the 160 episode range right now. Uh, that little bitty podcast has gone from maybe a hundred listeners an episode to 25,000 downloads a month, which I'm incredibly proud of. Um, not an overnight success. Of course, you know, it's putting in the time <laughs> and it's the, the compound interest. Um, but I'm still working with clients one-on-one -on -one because I love having that one-on-one -on -one client experience. I'm serving clients in a group coaching format. Um, I'm serving through the It's About Time Academy, which is my accessible membership program because time management shouldn't have to cost you thousands of dollars and thousands of hours um, in order to, to create a time management system that works for you. Um, and then in addition to the It's About Time Academy and the group coaching program and one-on-one -on -one and the podcast. I actually have my very first book coming out in June of 2023, June 20th. Um, so Time Management Essentials published by McGraw-Hill will be hitting shelves. And that has just been the experience of a lifetime to now write an entire book on time management. Did you ever expect that you would be saying this when you were busy <laughs> running around following a congressman, managing their outlook? <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I would have laughed. I would have absolutely laughed. Um, but I knew that once I got into this whole time management thing, having read so many books myself that just missed the mark for me and having to cobble together what was in so many books to kind of create the whole picture, you know, here's a book about habits. <clears throat> here's a book about habits. Here's a book about managing your energy. Here's a book about, you know, time blocking, whatever it is. I couldn't find anything that was just all encompassing. Like here, here's all of it in one place. And so I set the goal to become an author a few years ago and put author big front and center on my vision board because who doesn't love a good vision board, right? And so little by little, by keeping that top of mind, it's now become a reality. And you know, part of my goal is to make time management as accessible and easy to understand as possible. And so it's really awesome to now have this book coming out in order to just make it even more accessible to people who are looking for help. Um, and it's specific, it's specifically written for business owners. It's a part of McGraw Hill's business essentials series. Um, and so I, um, would, I mean, I'm just really excited to speak to other business owners who are trying to find the time to build their own dream. Yes. Yes. Well, man, I, I probably far too late now, but maybe for your next book, <laughs> I got the title idea. It's learn time management in five minutes or less. <laughs> Right? Can we do that? <laughs> Five minutes or less. I'll talk, I'll have to talk really fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, I'm interested. Uh, can you just share a little bit of where in the journey the podcast came? Was that a part of your lead acquisition strategy? How did that come into play? Yeah. So I knew that was something that I wanted to do very early on. Um, I committed to being a time management coach in May of 2019 and started working on the podcast that summer and then launched in December, I knew that I wanted to either have a YouTube channel or a podcast. I really wanted to have some type of anchor content um, because having that content is so important, again, to build the no like trust factor, to build your authority, and just to continue honing your, your technique and, and your craft with whatever you teach. And I was planning to launch a YouTube channel, which I have one now several years later, but I thought I wanted to do YouTube. But I asked my audience, 
I asked my Instagram followers, Hey, would you rather, do you, do you watch more YouTube or do you listen to podcasts? And the overwhelming response was podcasts. I listen to podcasts while I do dishes. I listen to podcasts while I'm taking, like picking the kids up from school. I listen to podcasts while I'm getting dressed in the morning. And so to me, that was a no brainer because having a podcast it now enables me to go with my listeners wherever they are, whenever it's convenient for them, while they're often doing something else. Um, if you read the book or if you listen to my podcast, you'll find out that I am not a big fan of multitasking because it usually never works. But there is a type of multitasking that actually is really productive. And it's doing something simple, like listening to a podcast while you do something else simple, like folding laundry. That's a really great way to multitask. And that's what my listeners, that's what my audience at the time was doing. And so, all right, podcast it is. Um, and so it has been a really, not only has it been a really fun way for me to, uh, it gives me an excuse to reach out to people I really want to talk with and learn from them. I'm always so curious about how people do life. Um, but it's, it, it's given me an opportunity to really test drive education before I turn it into a course or before I turn it into a lesson, because if it goes over well on the podcast and people want more, then I know that I'll be able to give them more through um, an academy module or something like that. Um, so it's been a really uh, just amazing source of, yes, new leads. I meet people all the time um, who find me through the podcast. And so I am really grateful that I started that very early in my business so that I can just continue to experience that growth over time. Yeah. 180 episodes this one. Is that what you're saying? I think, I think this week we released 161. So That's, yeah, we've been at it wow. for a while. I think I blurred ours. We're around the 80 ish mm -hmm. mark. So you're, you're about double. Uh, my, oh my, that's amazing. Um, so I would love to maybe just be a little bit selfish. I try to do this on okay. every podcast because, uh, we have so many great heroes on our platform. Uh, and I, one thing I, I noticed earlier when you're talking about uh, time management, which I, I really want to know more about, is you mentioned that it's not a one size fits fits all approach. Mm -hmm. So first of all, how do you identify what approach applies to me? <laughs> I love it. Okay. So do you remember how I checked my spam folder and found that invitation yes. to a Myers-Briggs personality workshop? Um, I actually, when I'm working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I give them the opportunity to take the full-blown Myers-Briggs assessment. And that is so telling um, as an indicator of people's preferences. And so that's, that's probably the most targeted way that I use, not use, but, you know, t uh, leverage someone's personality preferences into understanding what time management strategies are going to work best for them. I mean, some people thrive on a checklist. Other people are going to lose the checklist. It's not even going to work for them. Some people journaling is a really great way for them to cut the overwhelm, but for others, it's creating a step-by-step -step action plan. And it just, if, if you're someone who thrives on a checklist and I say, Oh, journaling works for me. You should do that. That's not, they're not going to be successful. And so much of the time management advice out there says, do it this way do it this way. But I am here to say, no, do it your way, but let's figure out what your way is. And so if, if we were doing a coaching session and we were going to work together for a few months, I would have you take the Myers-Briggs. But if we were just, you know, hanging out, I would ask you a couple questions like, you know, are you, do you tend to wait till the last minute or do you prefer, or do you feel more comfortable when you start early and plan in advance? Um, just kind of questions like that to kind of get an idea of, you know, how you operate and what your preferences are. Because again, every strategy isn't going to work for every person and it shouldn't because we're all different. <laughs> 
Sure. Well, I'm sure you've also, you've probably laid this down on your podcast as well. So I'm going to have to do my research (laughs) there. But if you will, if you had, say, a top three, maybe there's a strategy that applies to each top personality type um, that you'd throw out there, like that people could look into more and explore. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing that one thing that is universal is that time management does not start on the pages of your calendar right? And that probably seems completely backwards. So often when we want to get better at time management, people think, help me fit everything onto my calendar. No. One thing that is universal is starting with what matters most to you um, and, and framing your time management from how can I first decide what matters most and then organize my time based on that? So regardless of your personality type, the very first thing that I have my clients do, whether they're in my membership program, in a group coaching program, or we're working one-on-one, is I have them craft their vision for the future. What do you want your life to look like in six months, in a year, in five years? Let yourself daydream. What do you want your life to look like? Because then once you have that picture of what you want life to look like in the future, that gives us something to start reverse engineering. And we're able to say, okay, what are you doing now that is getting you closer to making that vision a reality? And if you're able to say, well, nothing, because my entire day is filled with doing things for other people or doing things that don't matter to me, things that I've said yes to, that I regret saying yes to, That's when we start to cut and edit and rearrange and discuss things like boundaries and talk. And we, we talk about things like how to say no respectfully, um, you know, whatever it is that we need to do to take that vision and then begin, um, almost architecting, designing what the time looks like to make that vision a reality. I love that. And that's also really applicable to anyone who is considering maybe even starting a business is just setting, taking that first step and, and figuring out what you think you might like your life to look right. like down the road. Yeah, B- um, Build a but- business that fits your life. Don't, so often we make the mistake of building a business and then trying to squeeze our life into the gaps. And then the next thing we know, we're completely overwhelmed, overloaded, and burnt out because our business has been taken over by Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law states that work expands to fill the time allotted. And if you have no boundaries around your work, and if you've designed this work first style business instead of a life first style business, it is so much harder to backtrack and fix it than it is to start early on with those boundaries in place. I absolutely love that. That resounds <laughs> completely. Um, I know I'm asking you for a lot that I could probably find on the podcast and I'm going to find this out, but I'm just going to maybe just ask for just your top tip for anyone. Maybe just in case we have someone out yeah. there who's maybe already experiencing that burnout. Mm-hmm. Where do you start to maybe work on eliminating or getting yourself back on track. Yeah, definitely. So whenever you start to feel those feelings of overwhelm or maybe like burnout is creeping in, it's really important to, you know, I say time management doesn't start on the pages of your calendar, but dealing with overwhelm does. And so really taking a hard look at how you're spending your time now and asking yourself, is all of this, Is everything that's on my calendar, is this high value? Is this making an impact? You know, the Pareto principle tells us that 80% of our outputs come from 20% of our inputs. So there's going to be 20%, 20% of how we spend our time is going to give us the most bang for that time, is going to give us the highest impact for that time. So if you're starting to feel overwhelmed or overloaded, um, you're, you're new in business, you're trying to do all the things, you're wearing all the hats, maybe you don't have a team yet, be very, very critical and ask yourself, what are my 20% activities? What are the things that are giving me the highest returns? Is it recording a podcast every week? Because you know that that's what's going to grow and nurture your audience. 
Is it reaching out and building relationships because you know that relationships and referrals is going to build your business? What are your 20% activities? And then cut, cut as much of the rest as possible. That Pareto principle or that 80-20 rule, it's just never wrong, is it? It's not, wrong. it's not. And you need to know <laughs> this is coming from someone who typically works only five, five hours a day, six max. Um, I pick my kids up from school every single day at around three 30. And so when they get home, there usually is no going back to work to burn the midnight oil. Um, so I have to focus on those 20% activities in order to run my business. Um, and so it is possible to get more done with less time. Well, I can't think of a better way to conclude our conversation. Um, <laughs> that is, <laughs> I mean, funnily enough, like that's like, that sounds like the title of the show. Um, <laughs> Get more done with less time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, for anyone who's listening, who's interested in learning more about you, I know you've got the podcast, but you also have the book coming out. You've got your socials. Where should we send them? Yes. So I would love for you to tune in to It's About Time, my podcast about work, life, and balance. I have a new episode that comes out every single Monday, either on a time management strategy that you can start implementing today, or it's an interview with some kind of go-getter who is getting things done. Um, and I I would love to be Instagram friends if you're on Instagram. My handle is Anna D. Cornick. I love it. Well, as always, we'll have that information in the show notes for you. And all of you listeners, you know this. I like to do this every time we have a podcaster on the show. Instead of me sending out my normal call to action and asking you to leave us a review, please go take some time. Listen to Anna's podcast. It's about time. Leave her a review. Podcasting is, you know, as fun as it is, it's a little bit of a lonely world as it relates to our listeners because the only way we hear from yeah. you is if you really really proactively reach out. So take some time, leave a review with a comment, especially if you do that on Apple Podcasts. I know we appreciate that greatly. Um, but that said, huge thank you, Anna, for taking some time out of your busy day. Um, or is it busy? Do you still say that if you're a time management person? <laughs> I try to say intentional or abundant, but today is a really full and fun day. So <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This has been such a pleasure. And thank you so much for um, asking the audience to, to check out the show and leave a review. Seriously, that means so much. I love it. I love it. Well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for listening to us. As always, we will look forward to seeing you next week on the Kajabi Edge podcast.